And for one year, she has put aside an acre for pyrethra. This looks amazing, Elizabeth. Very mm. nice. Yeah. You're just about to harvest? Yeah, good. Right, ready. There's a mm. lot of good work done here. Okay, thank you. Now, I'm sure in every shamba there are challenges. Yeah. And you do have challenges. Yeah, I have. Uh, which, 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 which Most are Most of the challenges there? that I have are weeds, nematodes, and drips. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is for the pyrethrum. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fear yeah. not, for we have our experts coming in right here okay. to assist you. Okay. We, Micah. How are you and How Nekesa? I'm good. Uh. Yes, I'm Nekesa good. and Micah, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> good to right? see you. Good right. to see you. I'll, I'll catch up Thank with you, you Caro. All right. Thank you, Caro. Bye, Elizabeth. Okay. All right. Okay. Our experts today are Mika Thuo of Kentegra, the company that buys the pyrethrum from the farmers, and Nekesa Wafula from Cropnuts, a soil testing company. The European Union and its bank, the EIB, provided funds to Cropnuts in this project. And the crop is pyrethrum, a once popular natural pesticide which is making a big comeback in Kenya and worldwide. The 80s and 90s, pyrethrum was the third highest earning crop in terms of exports after tea and coffee. So everything went south. We are back here to make sure it's back uh, on the farmer's fields. Back in the heyday of the crop, Elizabeth's mother had also joined the pyrethrum bandwagon. They were paying our school fees from the pyrethrum. I decided one day, one time, when I grow up and also planting the pyrethrum. So I didn't know that it will come back, but sooner or later, it came and meet me. So Elizabeth, yes. what did you do to get your pyrethrum looking this good? How did you start it off? After getting the pyrethrum from the Ketengra, they came and did the soil test for me so that I plant. Nakesa, why is a soil test important? If you're doing any crop production, it's very important to know the kind of nutrients that are available for your crop. So the first thing you need to do is undertake a soil test so that you know the nutrients that are available. Uh -huh. And the other thing that uh, people don't know about the soil, issues about pH, that's the acidity, the level of acidity or alkalinity of the soil. So if you have such issues, then even if you apply fertilizer, it will never be uh, sufficient for your crop. So it's very important to undertake a soil test. As Nekesa went on to explain, CropNuts was able to use the EU funds to further develop its soil testing facility for pyrethrum. Together with Kentegra, they can now offer farmers more affordable soil tests and train them in best agronomic practices. The first process which is mandatory is soil testing. That is number one. We want to know what type of soils and what the soils are lacking. So with that, it forms a very good foundation mm. to start pyrethrum farming. Mm. We give them planting materials, that is seeds and seedlings. Mm. After that, we have agronomists on the ground that support farmers. They are able to teach them all agronomic practices. Mm. And this is happening in the highlands, Micah? Yes, uh, pyrethrum is an altitude crop. Mm -hmm. It grows in the highlands. 2,000 meters above sea level is the recommended, and we have the specific highlands where pyrethrum grows very well. Pyrethrum does well in highlands such as Molo, Limuru, or parts of Eldoret. What is the importance of pyrethrum? Pyrethrum is the number one organic product in the market. The most important thing uh, on the flower is the flower head mm -hmm. as we pick, because this is where we find the pyrethrins. Mm -hmm. So once it's extracted and processed, it is used mm. to produce pesticides and insecticides. It had been replaced with what? It was replaced by synthetics, but due to the high global demand of pyrethrum, we cannot even satisfy the market with pyrethrum. Really? So that's why it's making a good comeback. There are issues about climate smart agriculture right now. There are issues about environment. People are becoming more sensitive to what they're using on their farm and even what they are consuming. So anything that is affecting you as a human being, you do not want it to go to the soil. You do not want it to go to your plants. So we have to now start farming in a way that is more climate smart. Uh, giving agronomy also advice that is more directed towards that side and helping farmers to actually increase their yields. Mm -hmm. So wh wh where is the market? Uh, the market is global. And the demand is huge. The demand is huge. That sounds so enticing. As Mika went on to explain, you can harvest up to 200 kilograms of pyrethrum per acre every month. Once dried, this weighs 50 kilograms. 
the dried pyrethrum is bought at 200 to 260 shillings per kilogram. If we take 200 shillings and multiply it by 50 kilograms, we are looking at um, let's see, no, 10,000 uh, uh, 10, shillings per acre. That's exactly 10,000 shillings per month from one acre. Not bad at all. But there are challenges. The challenges that I have are nematodes and drips. They keep on coming back. So when they are there, I don't produce more. So part of what we do at CropNuts uh, in terms of uh, soil testing is uh, nematode analysis because it's very important to know which type of nematodes is attacking the pyrethrum. Then we can provide recommendations for that. If you have nematodes, you can use a natural insecticide such as nimbacidin before you plant or while the crop is there. The other challenge that Elizabeth has talked about mm. Uh, is strips and that is quite seasonal mm. when it is very dry mm. it's quite obvious you'll find a lot of uh, thrips on, on the farm but we've been able mm. to advise farmers to get through the challenge that they are going through once the, the crop has bloomed the farmer harvest every two weeks mm. next steps will be for elizabeth to ensure she dries this crop well mm. and i believe she has a solar dryer to be able to do that mm. If you dry it well, that is one of the parameters you get to get high pyrethrum content mm. from pyrethrum. Pyrethrum crops are grows actively for 10 months in a year. So the two months are basically for cutback and regeneration. So what we advise our farmers is just cut back all these stalks mm. so that the flower after the rains can regenerate well. Pyrethrum is a perennial crop. That means you only plant it once and it keeps growing. 10 months of growth followed by two months of regrowth after it has been cut back. And of course, weeding is important. Mm -hmm. Weeding is very important because it really affects pie content. Just ensure your farm is clean at mm -hmm. any given mm -hmm. time. So what would make a farmer lose a whole crop? Uh, first of all, perethrum is a very hard crop. Once it establishes, it just needs the seasonal rains to be able to produce well. So unless there's a calamity like floods or extended drought, that could be the reason. You can be able to grow it besides any other crop. What we do discourage is intercropping because of competition for nutrients. Mm. Is it becoming popular here? Yeah, it is. So many farmers are growing it. Yeah. And I'm sure, Micah, you're very happy hearing that. Yes, I'm happy hearing that. Kenya used to produce 90% of the wild pyrethrum mm. in the 80s and 90s. Mm. Currently, we are producing only 4%. Oh, so you need to bring back all those percentages that were lost. We, we, we want to see the farms white. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping farmers will do that. I don't know about the other farmers, but Mika Thuo, our expert, is very happy with our farmers by Retram. Looks fantastic. The European Union and its bank, the EIB, are supporting farmers for prosperous communities. I want to go big with Pyrethrum, even if it is 10 acres, 6, I will. Well done, Elizabeth. <laughs>